In this video, I want to show you how to draw some basic force diagrams using forces we've already introduced in class, which is the force of gravity, the normal force, the force of tension, and the force of friction. And when you're drawing force diagrams, you're usually given a situation where an object is either moving at a constant speed or at rest, or it's either speeding up or slowing down. And you need to identify what's true of the sum of the forces. If we add them up in the x direction and the y direction, what do we have? And how do we represent that with vectors or arrows, which show the, the relative size and direction of the forces felt by the object? So we need to keep in mind something we've already talked about in class and investigated, which is the relationship between the motion of an object and the forces that it feels. And specifically, the, this relationship exists between the sum of the forces on an object. So if you add up all the forces, if there's something left over, it's going to speed up or slow down. It's going to have an acceleration. If you add up all the forces on an object and the sum of the forces is zero, that means it's going to move at a constant velocity, which means if it's at rest, it's going to stay at rest. Or if it's moving at a constant speed, it's going to stay moving at a constant speed, whether that's a constant positive velocity or a constant negative velocity. So let's put this stuff together to draw force diagrams for two situations. The first one is we're going to draw a force diagram for a car. It says it's being pushed to the right on level ground at a constant speed. So the first thing is, what are we drawing the force diagram for, or the free body diagram for? So because the car is feeling forces, the ground is feeling pushes or pulls or forces, and the people are feeling particular pushes and pulls, but we're going to focus on the car. So I would encourage you in the diagram, draw a dotted line around the object you're drawing the force diagram for. And then the next thing you should do is look at how is this object moving? Well, it says it's moving at a constant speed. Well, if we know something about the motion of the object, we should be able to make an inference about what's true of the sum of the forces on that object. So let's go back to how, are, how is the motion of an object related to the forces it feels. Well, it's, this car is moving at a constant speed. It's moving at a constant velocity, said to the right, so it's a constant positive velocity. And we've already figured out that when things move at constant velocities, the sum of the forces must be zero. If we add it all up, it's zero, which either means there's no forces felt by the object or all the forces are balanced and cancel each other out. So let's write in here that the sum of the forces in the x direction, you know, the direction of motion, must be zero. So in the x direction, when we add up the forces, the sum of the forces in the x direction must be zero. And if this is moving on level ground, there is no motion in the y direction, or there's no vertical motion. So it's kind of like vertically at rest. And that would be an example where the sum of the forces is also zero. So now let's start drawing the forces on this dot, which represents the car. Before we draw the force diagram and the arrows, we're going to define what different letters mean, which represent the objects involved. So C will represent the car, P will represent people, G will represent the ground, and E will represent the earth. The first force you should include on any object is the force of gravity, because objects near the Earth's surface or any massive body will feel a gravitational force. Uh, so we label the force of gravity on the car by the Earth F G C E. Our subscript notation is always the first subscript is what kind of force is it? The next one is what's feeling that force, and the last one is what's actually causing that force. So it's the force of gravity on the car by the Earth. Well, this is a negative y force. It's in the negative y direction. And if we look back at this, we know the sum of all the forces in the y direction must be zero. So if there's a negative downward force, there has to be a positive upward force that's equal in size and opposite in direction as the gravitational force, as long as that's the only other vertical force. So what force is upward on the car that's either a push or pull that's balancing out the gravitational force? Well, the car is resting on the ground, or it's moving along the ground, and as it's moving along the ground, it's kind of compressing or squishing the atoms of the road, and they're going to push back with that force we call the normal force. And that force is always perpendicular to the direction of the solid material that's applying the force, that's doing the pushing. Since this is a horizontal surface, it's going to be pushing straight up perpendicular to it. So we're going to have a force normal on the car by what? by the ground, so it's F-N-C-G.
Well, coming back over here, it says these people are pushing the car to the right. So that means we have to have an arrow showing the size of the push that the people are exerting on the car. And it doesn't fit neatly into our categories of normal force, gravitational force, frictional force, or tension force. So um, we can just use the notation F sub P, which represents like a force of push. So we know it's a pushing force. Uh, the car is feeling it and the people are what's causing it. So it's the force of push on the car by the people. So at this point, the force diagram is not quite done yet because if we go back to the sum of the forces in the X direction, we know the sum must be zero. Why? Because it's not speeding up or slowing down. It's moving at a constant speed, which means if there's a force to the right, there has to be at least one or more forces to the left to balance it, balance it out so the sum of the forces is zero. Well, what could that be? Well, the only thing that it could be that we've talked about would be friction. As this thing is moving along the ground, if it's moving to the right, there would be a frictional force to the left, if there is a frictional force. And remember, friction is always parallel with the surface that's doing the, the frictional force pushing. So if it's moving to the right, it would be back to the left. So we're gonna have another arrow drawn from the center of the dot to the left, the same size as the pushing force to show that these two things balance. And we're gonna label that the force of friction on the car by the ground because the ground is what's applying the frictional force against the car. And then we can use some notation here to show that the pushing force is the same size as the frictional force and the normal force pointed up is the same size as the gravitational force pulling back down. So when you guys go through and make force diagrams in your homework assignment, this is the way that you're gonna do it. You're gonna identify the sum of the forces in the X and Y direction, horizontal and vertical, you're gonna label all your subscript definitions and then make your force diagram to explain what's true of the forces on the object, which explains why it's moving the way that it is. So here's just some notes down below if you want to read over a little summary of what we just talked about. For our last example, we've got a bungee jumper, says which is moving down and decreasing in speed. So the first thing is, we're gonna be drawing the forces that the bungee jumper feels. So we're gonna draw, draw a dashed line around the bungee jumper. And then we need to look at how the bungee jumper is moving. So as they're moving down, so in the negative Y direction, and they're decreasing speed or slowing down. So let's go back to what we know about the relationship between the motion of an object and the forces that it feels, or the sum of the forces that it feels. Our bungee jumper was decreasing speed. So what do we know about things that decrease in speed? We know that the sum of the forces points in the opposite direction of motion. So if the bungee jumper was moving down, the sum of the forces must be pointed up. There must be more force up than down. So looking at our little motion map here, the bungee jumper is decreasing speed while moving in the negative direction. So the velocity is getting less negative, so it's a positive acceleration. And the sum of the forces will be pointing in the direction of the acceleration. That's in the opposite direction that the object is actually moving. The bungee jumper is moving down, so there must be more force pointed in the opposite direction, which is up. So the sum of the forces in the y direction must be positive. So let's transfer this over here. The sum of the forces in the y direction must be positive. And we're just gonna assume they're, they're moving straight down. There's no horizontal motion. So horizontally, essentially, the bungee jumper's at rest, even though they're moving vertically. And so in the horizontal direction, the sum of the forces in the X direction must be zero. So let's define our subscripts. Uh, P will represent the person or the bungee jumper. R is gonna be the rope that's attached to them or the elastic material. E is the earth and A is gonna be air. So let's assume that they're falling through the air and the air has some kind of resistive effect on their motion. We'll add that to our force diagram. So what's the first force we always add to force diagrams? It's the gravitational force because every object with mass, which is all solid objects, will feel a gravitational pull from the earth. So I'm gonna have a, a force of gravity, draw an arrow down, it's gonna be the force of gravity on the person by the earth. The earth is what's doing the pulling. Well, we have to have more forces because we know the sum of the forces in the y direction must be positive. Like there's a negative force. There has to be not only a positive force, but a bigger positive force than this negative y force of gravity. Well, what is that? 
Well, the person's falling down and they're stretching this material. And we know that when a material is stretched beyond its normal relaxed state, it's going to kind of pull back against that. So the person is stretching the rope down. So the rope will be pulling the person upward. We call that a force of tension. So we're going to draw an arrow up that's larger in size than the gravitational force. We're going to label this the force of tension on the person by the rope. And this could be enough to explain why the bungee jumper is slowing down or decreasing in speed because tension, which is pulling back against the direction of motion, is bigger than gravity, which is trying to speed them up. Well, like I said in the beginning, let's assume that there's some effect of air resistance. If the problem said air resistance is negligible um, or you just assume that that was the case, we could stop here. But what if we decided air resistance did have an effect on the motion or it was influencing how quickly they were decreasing speed. Well, which direction would the air be pushing on the person? Well, it's always a resistive effect. So if you're moving forward, the air is pushing backwards. Or in this case, if the bungee jumper is moving down, the air will be pushing back in the upward direction. Let's assume it's small. So we're going to add another little arrow. Uh, and we could call it a force of friction on the person by the air or maybe just a force of push. The air is pushing the person up a little bit. So we've got this little arrow represents the force of push on the person by the air. And in the end, these two forces combined are bigger than the gravitational force, which explains why the bungee jumper is actually decreasing speed. And if you want a little summary of what we just talked about, it's in the notes below. Now it's your turn to practice making basic force diagrams for objects or people moving in different situations, speeding up, slowing down, at rest, moving at constant speeds. And I want you guys to go through the same sequence that I just showed you, identifying what's true of the sum of the forces in the X and Y direction, defining subscripts, and then drawing a force diagram, labeling all the forces felt by the object that's underlined or the person that's underlined that explains why they're moving the way that they do.